Today we've got a new guitar to show you from Gibson. It is the J4550s in faded finish or faded series. There's a whole slew of these coming. We're going to tell you all about them, so stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast. It's the Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So this is one entry into a series of guitars that are coming out from Gibson called the Faded Series. Now, Gibson has had faded guitars in the past. These are a little bit like those, but also a little bit different than those. Um, as an example, there used to be like a 2017 faded Les Paul that it had a satin nitro finish, but mm -hmm. the pickups were also different. It didn't have binding, you know, all of that kind of stuff. This is a J4550 faded. And for all intents and purposes, all of the other specs are just like a 50s J45, which by the way, if you've watched our channel for any period of time, maybe heard us complain about it. It's been kind of hard to get J45s. A little bit, a yeah. little bit. Kind of hard to get Gibson uh, anything, a uh, little bit. So <clears throat> glad to have- Surprised we got this. Yeah, glad to have these in stock. You know, when they announced these, there's, there's two thoughts I had. One, I knew because of what it was, and I'll explain this, that we would probably have better availability of these guitars. And two, I have, maybe it's because I'm getting old, <laughs> maybe it's what's happening in the industry, I am gravitating more and more to satin finished instruments. On electric guitars, it doesn't have to be satin maybe, but like it's kind of a knocked down gloss. There are things that I'm just aesthetically and feel wise preferring. Um, and we've, we've talked about that. Yeah. Taylor satin finish, yeah. um, VOS, like F Gibson Custom Shop stuff. Some of the reasons I like it, some of the relic stuff, like Journeyman Fender Custom feels Shop. Good. It feels good. It feels really nice. The tackiness that is particularly there with Nitro, um, and, and sometimes, you know, there with Poly, I just, I'm starting to like less and less, personally. And I, I like the look of, of a satin fish guitar. So that appealed to me, and I think part of what Gibson's doing, part of it is appealing to yeah. this, this trend in the industry that's very much similar to what happens in the orchestral instruments, which is, uh, it's kind of a reverse. Yeah. You know, for guitars, for years, it's been if it was satin, it was less expensive, right? Yeah. And if it was gloss, it was more expensive. But if you went to orchestral instruments like a cello, a it's glossy gloss. cello was cheap. Yeah. Uh, and a finer instrument typically was a satin finished instrument. And so now we're, we're kind of seeing that happen in the guitar world. Yeah. And, and I welcome it. Gibson does not have a ton of high-end satin finished guitars currently in the None. lineup. None. Yeah, everything that you're going to get, generation collection, mm -hmm. but that's because it's like your entry level and it's very different right. finish than this is. Um, yeah, this is not like the satin finish on a, a generation collection, which I'm glad you pointed out. Uh, years ago, they tried doing kind of a, a natural, like a beeswax finish, mm -hmm. which was very rough. It felt cool, it was super resonant, but um, it didn't really find a market. So this is, you know, this is kind of more along the lines of what we've seen with Custom Shop Martin, mm -hmm. um, some of the, the semi-gloss that we've seen from Furch, where it is a nitro finished, it, it has not been glossed. And so let's, let's basically talk about that. Now you do some woodworking. I do. Okay. How often do you do an oil finish versus like trying to gloss something up? I mean, I always do satin finishes when I'm doing it. I just think it feels better. It's easy to take care of. Mm -hmm. You know, I enjoy that. I have had problems with, I mean, some people just want really glossy stuff. And sure. You got to do it. My dad has done a lot more of that than I have in its painstaking process. So talk, let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah. Because I think that's a, that's a big part of the equation here. Yeah. What is the big difference for people that don't know between having a satin finish and having a glossy finish. Is it a different finish? No, it's just, I mean, the amount of work and layers and polishing and, you know, sanding that or steel wool, all that stuff yeah. versus you throw a couple coats of a satin on there, you make sure it's even and you're good to go. You right. Know? Yeah, yeah, and effectively that's, that's a big reason why I think 
Gibson's, there's two reasons. One, I think there is a move in the industry towards satin. Yeah. Um, I think satin finishes, they're thinner. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more about that based upon what you were just saying. Um, and they're faster. From a manufacturing standpoint, they take less time than a gloss finish does. Um, a, a good, I should say a good gloss good finish. Gloss I finish. mean, you can buy a cheap, you know, import guitar that's had some, you know, thick layers sprayed upon it and glossed up. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. Because you want to achieve, with instruments particularly, um, a thin finish that's glossed. Okay? Yeah, very uniform. Um, and so it has to be, yeah, it has to be uniform, has to be level, can't be too thick because the thicker the finish is, the more it's going to impede the resonance of the guitar. So increased resonance, to me, feel and aesthetics are benefits of uh, a satin finish for the player. But from a manufacturing standpoint, they can build this guitar faster yeah. than they can if they have to do it gloss because to do it gloss would require additional steps. You'd have to spray it, sand it down, spray it, sand it down, spray it, and, and, yeah. uh, and keep you know, basically polishing it until you get it to this mirror-like gloss luster. Yeah. It's and a pain. It is a pain, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that, and I do not fault anybody that's like, if you dig satin, I'll give you satin, you know? Yeah, and one, it's backbreaking work. You know, years ago, Taylor came up with a robot that they call affectionately Buffy the Guitar Slayer. Um, and it was a robot that Martin also uses now yeah. to take a guitar and push it against these various buffing wheels to get it through a lot of the initial stages of glossing. Because what they found was that in the factory where the most repeated work-related injuries came from was like back and shoulder and neck strain from someone standing there at various polish wheels polishing up a guitar. Um, it is, when we say backbreaking work, we literally mean it's backbreaking work. And so they, t they brought robotics along with a learning curve, destroying a few guitars in the process, which is why it's the, uh, the guitar slayer. You saw the, the Martin version saw, recently. Yeah. Um, you know, it, there's still a final buffing stage, but that gets a lot of the work done. So, um, so yeah, I think that's that and what's going on in the industry is the reason that they did this. Yeah. But I'm a fan. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, the guitar is going to be, I mean, if everything holds true, this is a thinner finish. Yeah. The guitar will be more resonant than a gloss nitro finished 50s J45, and it's a few hundred dollars cheaper, like 400 bucks cheaper. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is going to be convincing J45 and Gibson diehards that you can have potentially a better J45 that's not a gloss finish. <laughs> you know what's funny about it? They're going, well, it wasn't like that back in the good old days, right? But if you find a vintage one, it's just not much gloss yeah. anymore anyway. Um, you know, the gloss, yeah. the, it's pretty patinaed and getting oh, sand yeah. on its own. And if you play this long enough, it might gloss up on its own. You're anyway. going to gloss this one up. Uh, I mean, it's just, a, it's a nice looking guitar, and the whole time you've been talking, I've just been looking it over, and it's just a really, really well made, very consistent finish, and I like it. It looks great. It feels nice. It's super light. And I like that it's still a satin nitro. I smelled it as soon as I got out of the case. Yes, it's nitro. Um, yeah. And it still comes with the great specs that we love on the J4550s. So it's got the classic tuners. It's all solid construction. Big old pick guard. It's got the big old pick guard. It's got an LR Bags VTC pickup system in it, so it's ready to go uh, for your gig. And a hard shell case, American made. And price on this is around $2,500 um, versus around three. Yeah. Yeah, for, based upon current pricing, check our website at alamomusic.com for the latest pricing. But we're going to put it through its paces so that you can hear all of that resonance for yourself. Check it out.
So there you have it. J4550 50s faded, which is basically a satin finished J4550 50s guitar from Gibson. And as we said at the onset, there's a number of these coming out. So they're doing a J35. Hummingbird. Hummingbird. Sure. Yeah. Les Pauls. There's a 61 SG that's, that's getting gonna be that. Cool. Yeah. That's going to be very cool. Um, and, and again, like I said, other outside of what they did in the past, these are not stripped down versions of these guitars. They're just satin finished versions of these guitars. So that 61 SG is a 61 SG all day long with a finish I might actually prefer to the glossy. Yeah. You know? um, same thing with the Les Pauls. They are Les Pauls all day long, uh, but with a satin finish. And, and I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. Usually with satin Les Pauls, you're getting a, you know, what's that, tri traditional or tribute? You're getting yeah, it's like a tribute. A tribute the, the but previous satin ones, like stripped down, different hardware, no binding, and, and not a finish like this. Those were very, very thin open yeah. pour finishes. But with uh, the spec of a standard and a satin finish, yeah. it'll be be very cool. Yeah, so keep on uh, keep that on your radar for the, f uh, the Faded series. You can check them out on our website at alamomusic.com. I'm sorry, I stole your line. What's the website, Cooper? You're gonna wanna go to alamomusic.com. Okay, enough of that, good. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and as we always like to say with Gibson, the way of the world uh, currently is that you cannot purchase a Gibson on our website for reasons. Um, and so you have to call us or come in uh, and do that because we've got a great selection of Gibsons and uh, and so many other reasons that we're nice people. You just send us a chat or an email and we'll call you. <laughs> or we'll call you. We will call you. And get you the right Gibson, send you photos and all of that stuff uh, until the day that you can buy it on our website when, I'm when you can. Cause I'm working on it. Because of reasons. Yeah. So uh, anyways, <laughs> if you want to know more, you can call us. Um, but you know, I always say at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. I think something resonant like this that feels good is something that you're going to pick up more. So yeah. I'm excited to see it. I hope that they find their way to good hands and good homes uh, to make good music. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notification, like our videos, and keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.